Well, Saturday, we first told you how a Memphis police officer in Hickory Hill was shot while responding to a 911 call. Giorgio Menace is facing a long list of charges after allegedly stealing his uncle's car and driving to another family member's home. A police say they arrived to the Hickory Hill home where they say Menace made threats to harm people inside the house, including a child. When police tried to arrest him, they say Menace pulled a gun from his waist and shot one of the officers. Well, the armed suspect was taken into custody uninjured, but the question is how? Our Rebecca Butcher, who covered the shooting over the weekend, sat down with the department's assistant chief on the policies in place to de-escalate. Well, Rudy, after reporting this story Saturday, many viewers were left thinking, how exactly did a man who shot a police officer here in Memphis end up not getting fired upon, but instead safely brought into custody? The department says while each call is different, unique, the main thing that officers are trained to look for is compliance. Yellow tape multiple police cars and flashing blue lights were seen Saturday at the Hickory Hill apartment complex, the park. The suspect police say fired shots at a party and also was in possession of a stolen car. He was also walking in the wooded area armed. Officers challenged him. Uh, they talked to him. They tried to get him to drop the gun. Assistant Chief Sean Jones says when three officers responded, they didn't at first know the suspect had a gun on him. We began talking to him. My crisis intervention people were there speaking with him. They were able to kind of subdue him, I, I would say, uh, but not before he was able to shoot one of our officers. Jones said the officers tried to get the suspect to comply, only trying to use deadly force as a final option. They gave him verbal commands several times to try to, you know, get him to disarm, uh, drop the gun. Um, they wrestled him to the ground, basically, and uh, disarmed him in that process because he did discharge twice at officers where the, our officers could have discharged their firearms, but they maintained firearm restraint. Restraint that played into the best interests of everyone. Those with badges and in plain clothes. Jones, who has 35 years of law enforcement experience, says training is critical. We have about four classes at a minimum that we, from a public trust standpoint, from a 21st century policing standpoint, uh, because we don't want to be seen as a you know, occupying force. So next on many minds, what about other cases in Memphis where MPD has used deadly force resulting in the death of a citizen? I mean, you have to be in the officer's mind at the time dealing with that particular situation where they may choose to use force. Last, I asked Jones, is it the norm? People injured or killed at the hands of the police? We put on our gun belts. We don't, we're not doing that for the purpose of thinking that we're going to have to injure someone. A handgun is issued to us as a tool of our trade uh, because there's uh, sometimes our situations where we may have to defend ourselves or the lives of others. All right, Rebecca, so we've heard what police have to say here, but what are critics and activists having to say about de-escalation? Yeah, Rudy, I spoke to an activist. She was saying that really they want in-person, transparent, real conversations with our law enforcement on how people are treated in the community, um, how officers patrol everyday streets here. What, whatever the solution is, it's going to take time um, and also a lot of patience and, and other uh, stakeholders to really kind of identify and rectify root causes. A lot of work there still to be done. The next question is, we had an officer injured in this process. What's the status of that officer tonight? Yeah, we're happy to be able to report. We have learned today that he's doing okay. He's out of the hospital, and they say he's recovering from home. All right, Rebecca Butcher, thanks a lot.